hey hi hello <laughs> welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is jess and today we're talking about adaptations so um yes do you like my shirt it's not for sale sorry but <laughs> it was a, a design i did for my patrons of course i got myself one and uh yeah i want baby's face on everything but i am i did like uh working with an artist right now to design new like stuff for my youtube banner and new merchandise design so it's like coming i just wanted to upgrade the art style but anyway so adaptations i really feel like hollywood is flat out of original ideas and if it's not marvel a remake of a movie no one wanted it is a book adaptation which is good for us readers i guess even though not all adaptations are created equally so i did one at the end of december i think that was adaptations coming out this year for books that i want to read so if you want to watch that video i'll have it uh linked below above maybe both so i already did that one i have this whole list on my notion so now i have another list of ones where i really don't want to read the book i just want to watch the adaptation and there can be many reasons why i don't want to read the book and then i also have another one that'll be coming later that is ones that i've already read adaptations like do you need all of these ah, but here they are anyway so these ones for the most part i really have given up on reading them or I just don't plan to read them anytime soon and I would just go ahead and watch the adaptation and then maybe down the road I'll get to it or maybe not. So we shall get into this list. I did take a couple off because I made this list and I've already changed my mind in that short amount of time. So at the top of my list I have Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I think this is a super popular most people know about this one. It is a graphic novel series I believe and I think it is a queer romance between Nick and Charlie and I always hear people say it's so cute it's so sweet and so I just think it would be something enjoyable to watch. I really don't care to read it. I'm also not a big like graphic novel reader. Um, so I have that I don't have a date but it is supposed to be on Netflix so it just seems like something like wholesome feel good that I could watch and yeah I mean I will say the graphic novels like themselves look really cute and like the colors but just never really had interest in reading them but I definitely would watch it on Netflix so I don't know when that's coming but hopefully soonish because I'm in the mood for a little happy fluffy romance. Then I have House of the Dragon which is obviously based on Fire and Blood by George R.R. R. Martin, which I own. It's up there. I have not read it, mainly because I don't want to read anything in that world because then I'm going to go back and want to read the series and then remember that George is still not that, <clears throat> that George is still not giving us Winds of Winter or Dreams of Spring. So who? I don't know when this I know this one's coming out this year but I don't know the date if it's coming out in the spring or in the fall I didn't see the date but essentially Fire and Blood is like 200 years is it 200 years before Game of Thrones and is following the Targaryens um before they get to the Targaryen Civil War so a lot of the things that are alluded to or like talked about that happened in the past that are talked about in Game of Thrones this is one of those big events with the Targaryen family which I'm very much interested in I just know that if I start reading even though if I watch the show I'm probably I don't know y'all. I want to read it. I want to watch it but I also just want him to give me those last two books. I know. I know. Authors don't owe us anything but I want it so bad. Please. It's just two books George. It's just two books. So anyway whenever that comes out um I shall partake in that and hopefully it's not so I look I'm so tired of TV being dark TV and movies. I'm like look these are not getting any crisper. Please stop making everything so damn dark. I can't see. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And hopefully the wigs are on point. Because we know in Game of Thrones they started out rough. Okay. Next I have The Lost Apothecary. I remember I think this is a book of the month pick. I think the cover was really pretty. And it's by Sarah Penner. And it's becoming a series on Fox. Here's the issue. I don't want to read the book. I wouldn't watch this but Fox like... What street is it gonna be on Hulu? Can I watch it on Hulu after airs on Fox? But it's supposed to be a series on Fox. So the book is centered around a secret apothecary shop that caters to I think it's about women who like go to this apothecary to get poisons to basically kill men, which you know, 
I'm here for that. Um, I think. <laughs> This says, but the apothecary's fate is jeopardized when her newest patron, a precocious 12 year old, makes a fatal mistake, sparking a string of consequences that echo through the centuries. So this is set, I don't know what century it's set in. Is it like the 1800s or something? I just, I do remember a few people reading it and it sounded, meh, it sounded okay. And I had nothing that I would really love to watch, but it sounds very interesting. And if John Wright could be a really, I mean, I don't know how long of a series, if it's like a mini series, they're gonna be like multiple seasons. I would feel like one book would translate well into a movie. But I don't know. I'm just intrigued by that premise, but thrown off by the 12 year old. So I don't know. Any, if you've read any of these books and you know, have any thoughts on if they're gonna pick great, great adaptations or if you're excited about any of these, of course, let me know. Then I have, this one technically has an asterisk beside it because I do have the audiobook that I got from Libra FM, but I'm like, do I really want to read it? And it's Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid, who's getting so many of her books adapted on various different networks. So this one's going to be on Hulu. And this book, I think, is vaguely related to, there might be a character from Daisy Jones and the Six, which I didn't read, don't have interest in that. And there's something about this is like a story that all happens in one day or something, something like a block party and a fire. I don't really know. I know people who love Tinkins Jailer, Tinkins Jailer Reed. Taylor Jenkins Reed, I heard for the most part really good things about it. I think it won the historical fiction category for Goodreads because anytime a book comes out, they're really popular. I've read two books by her and I enjoyed that. But yeah, the last two really haven't wowed me. And I don't even know if I would watch Daisy Jones and the Six adaptation. I don't even have it on my list because Mm, I don't know but then I think the guy who played Finnick O'Dare from Hunger Games is in it so maybe I should have put it on my list. We'll see. I'll see a preview and see how I feel but anyway I put Malibu Rising on here. Uh we'll see if it's a movie. It's gonna be a show or a movie? I don't know. Well I don't know you know this is there's nothing set in stone here. These are just things that I'm interested in and also there are so many more adaptations like there's so many. So these are just ones that I was like huh you know, I've heard of that or this premise sounds cool. I would like to see it. Then I have The Midnight Club by Christopher Pike. This is a book that was written in the 90s and it's a, I think it's a horror novel and it's being ad adapted on Netflix by Mike Flanagan. And if you know Mike Flanagan, he did The Haunting of Hill House. Did he also do Bly, Bly, Man Bly Manor? And he did recently, it was Midnight Mass, which I did not there were some aspects I really liked. I didn't love it, but I loved The Haunting of Hill House. Oh my God. Oh my god a masterpiece so this one um a series oh i guess it's based on a series of books by christopher pike apparently it's about a group of terminally ill teenagers who are our residents at rotterdam house and together they create the midnight club we meet in secret at midnight to tell horror stories i basically my friend carrie told me about this because of me watching and enjoying other things by mike flanagan so i feel like even if I don't love it like The Haunting of Hill House, it'll still be great because of who my play again is in the work that he does. So I'm very interested to see that. Then this one, I had never heard of this book, but I have heard of the author, which is Colson Whitehead. And the book is called Sag Harbor. So this is going to be on HBO and it's his fourth book. And the story follows Benji Cooper, who's a black teenager from New York City, who spends the summers in Sag Harbor with his brother, Reggie, and the rest of his family. And this is what really got me. Benji and Reggie are some of the few black students at their preppy private school in New York City. And the novel is set in 1985, explores a small community of well-off African-Americans who set up their own enclave on the East End. So I was like, yes, that sounds just like bougie and good. And I wanna watch that. Uh, again, I don't, I'm assuming that's gonna be a show, but I haven't read that book. Um, it's not like I don't want to read it. I just have no plans to read it soon. And it sounds like it could be really good, especially um, on HBO. Like, I don't know if there are some other things that happen in the story, but we got black people who have their own side of the East End. We love to see it. <laughs> then I have Sandman by Neil Gaiman. Sorry, Leanna. I, how I, I think I've only read one or, mm, I don't know. I just, Neil Gaiman's not high up on my list of people to read. I'm so sorry. And uh, this book that says, upon escaping after decades of imprisonment by a mortal wizard, Dream, the personification of Dream, sets about to reclaim his lost equipment. Mainly because this has Gwendolyn Christie in it. I love her. And this is gonna be on Netflix. I don't have a date. What I did read from, what did I even read from Neil Gaiman? I don't even 
remember, but I didn't love his like tone and his writing. So I feel like even though this sounds like a really cool premise, I don't know if I would enjoy it because I don't know if his writing, like we vibe. I haven't given up on him completely. Like I'm intrigued by Neon, not Neon Gods. That is a different author by American Gods. So yeah, anyway, happy, we'll be happy to see Gwendolyn Christie again. And again, it sounds really fun. I oh my God. Okay, I don't know, camera at angle, how to change the battery, but I hadn't charged my other battery, so I don't know how long this is gonna last. I just put it on the charger to get a little juice. Hopefully we can make it through the rest of this. Where were we? Okay, so the next one I had was No Exit by Taylor Adams. I'm kind of intrigued to read this because I've heard really good things about it, but like not anytime soon. And it comes out on, I think I had February 25th, maybe? I had it was coming out soon on Hulu and I heard it's a really good thriller. Basically it's at like a rest stop and I don't think anyone gets murdered but there's like a child trapped in a car and so they assume that this kid has been kidnapped and they have to figure out whose car this is and they're like snowed in. I know Mar recently read it and really enjoyed it so I'm like hmm should I read it but then I feel like if I read it and it's a good adapt adaptation it'll just be like the same thing so maybe I should just watch it and save my time and read other things that would be I don't know not let's say like more worth it. And what do you think? What do you think? And then I have okay the Lord of the Rings adaptation on Amazon. Is it called? I feel like it's called something else. It's coming out in September. Now, if you see my other videos, you know that I did not enjoy The Wheel of Time, which is also by Amazon. However, The Wheel of Time's eight episodes got about $10 million. I, if I read correctly, they put about a quarter million into this Lord of the Rings adaptation. And I can't remember exactly what it's supposed to be. I didn't really look into it. I just want to watch it and just see how I feel about it. I don't want to know too much about it. Um, I know they've been releasing like photos of actors and stuff and I'm not looking. It's kind of what I did with The Wheel of Time. I only watched one trailer for The Wheel of Time, went into it. Eh. So this, I'm like, I don't want to build up any expectation or hope. I'm nervous because of what Wheel of Time was, but this does have more money. And then also because the Lord of the Rings films are perfection. So I'm like, I don't know what else you need to do. Like, I don't know why you need to add more. <sighs> but I'm gonna watch it and you're gonna hear my feelings about it most likely, so we shall see. So last night on Reading Sprints, I had Angela on and she told me to watch the newest trailer for Ring of Power, or the Ring of Power. And mm, I am underwhelmed. There's a lot of CGI and it doesn't look great. Um. I mean, I'm happy to see some melanin in the show and I'm still going to watch it, but I was not encouraged <laughs> or not uh, hyped, if you will, by the trailer. And of course, there's mad racist people online because they're mad. There's, you know, it's not an all white cast and it's like boohoo, kick rocks. I don't know. Maybe the, it'll be better like watching the show but the trailer leaves a lot to be desired. And apparently this takes place like thousands of years before the events of The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. So there's that. Now, I had Death on the Nile on my list. I don't know why I'm not some huge Ag Agatha Christie fan, but I did have it on there. It comes out this month. But then I was looking at it and it has, what's her name, Gal Gadot? And I was like, ah! And then I was thinking to that, is that like, is this the same movie where she has like that terrible line that's like in a preview and I was like I don't know so I don't know maybe I'll wait to see if it's like oh really great because I think Kenneth Branagh is in it but Gal Gadot I'm good girl I'm good this next one sounds really good it's called The Black Phone that's supposed to be out February 4th and I assume a lot of these are coming out in theaters but I will be waiting for them to get on whatever streaming uh, platform obviously. So this one is after being abducted by a child killer and locked in a soundproof basement, a 13 year old starts receiving calls on a disconnected phone from the killer's previous victims. And the I'll put like the um, movie poster. It looks creepy. I think it's by Joe Hill. So I was like, Oh, that sounds like that could be good. The Wonder by Emma Donahue, and this is set in the Irish Midlands in 1862. I don't know what made me put this on my list. I've never heard of this book. And maybe just because it's like historical and I do love me a period piece. 
Um, so it just says that an English nurse is brought to a tiny village to observe an 11 year old and tourists and pilgrims mass to witness the girl who is said to have survived without food for months. Ooh, maybe that's why I put it on there. And I don't know who's gonna be in that one. I just have 2022 and it's, you know, not guaranteed that all of these are gonna come out this year. But um, I do love a good period piece. So we shall see about that one. Now this next one, I kind of did wanna read. Then I was like, maybe it'll be a better movie after I heard Mara talk about it. And now I'm kind of feeling mm, about the movie. So it's Bullet Train, which is supposed to come out April 8th. And it's five assassins aboard a fast moving bullet train uh, find out their missions have something in common and it's set in Japan. It's been translated into English. And Mara did say she felt like it would be really good. Like it feels like it's written for screen. But my problem is I wanted, I didn't know it was gonna be like a US made movie. I thought it was gonna be like a Japanese movie and I have no problem watching subtitles. And I love Sandra Bullock, but it has Sandra Bullock and Brad Pitt in it. I'm like, I don't want this Eastern story with these western people in it like i don't know if it's still gonna be set in japan and the main characters are just gonna be these white people but i'm like <sighs> like it's they're fine but i'm generally bored with western media there are certain things that i enjoy but all of these things coming out they look whack to me or i watch part of it i'm like <sighs> um again i'm not going into theater so whenever it comes out on um, whatever i'll give it a try because it sounds like a really cool concept but i'm not rushing to get to it then I have The Gray Man, which I added on here primarily because it has my husband Chris Evans in it. That's really all I know. <laughs> Although the synopsis did say in Europe, a CIA operative turned assassin looks to evade mysterious forces as he tries to save the lives, save the lives of the daughters who don't know he exists. So haven't heard of the book. Didn't really care about the movie till I saw Chris Evans is gonna be on it. I'm gonna be just honest with you because sometimes you just need to look at a nice looking man, okay, on the screen. And lastly on this list is Matilda, which is by, I done forgot Lord, Royal Dahl, which surprisingly I've never read that one. I love the OG movie and I'm very critical about remakes, but this has Emma Thompson in it and she's delightful. So I'm intrigued. That's supposed to be in December on Netflix. So I don't know if it can top the original one, like Miss Honey, an icon, a queen, and Mara Wilson. I mean, that's always gonna be a classic, but I will give this a try because Emma Thompson is Emma Thompson. But that is just some, I mean, a fraction of all of the adaptations that are just like being announced for this year. <sighs> There's so many more. And these are ones that I am not particularly want to read or not in any rush. So let me know your thoughts on any of these. Are you excited about any of these? Or if you've read the book, like I said, will it be a good ad adaptation? And I will have another video coming. But yeah, Hollywood is like, mm, we don't have any ideas, <laughs> which is great for these authors, you know, getting their coin by getting the rights purchased. But it's really odd. I was I've talk I was talking to my friend Gary and I've seen this conversation on Twitter about the golden age we had like the early 90s the late 90s early 2000s with the rom-coms like can they not recreate that? Those were iconic and they were like 90 minutes. That's like I need that era of film back. And I, and they everything now is like two and a half hours or more and I'm just like I need a good rom-com back. I don't know who's gonna make that happen. But for the most part, I will say that there doesn't seem to be a lot of romance novels being adapted. And I think that is something, since Hollywood can't come up with their own stories, they at least need to delve into the world of romance because there are so many stories out there that they can adapt for really cute movies or some that probably would even be better as a movie because you know, the actors could really just embody all of that tension and, um, pining so hollywood if you're listening i know they're not listening please check out the romances actually just come to me and i'll tell you which ones you should adapt but yeah anyway good enough rambling i hope you enjoyed um i will some of these probably have some takes some videos some discussions on them after they come out probably more the fantasy ones like house of the dragon lord of the rings but anything else that i feel very strongly about I'll flat my gums about on this channel. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up. Think about subscribing. Check out my description. Um, I will list all the books if you want to check them out. Uh, there's ways to support my channel. And 
think that's it. Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreened, and I'll see you in the next one.